Do you have a cupboard at home full of herbs and spices that you have no idea what to do with? You are not alone. Over the next few weeks, food expert Andrea Bucket will feature a different herb or spice and show us how to put a little kick in our kitchen in a series we are calling The Spice is Right. Today, we are going to look at three ways to use tarragon. Good morning to you, Andrea. Good morning. I had to look up what tarragon looks like. Really? Because I didn't know. Well, <laughs> well, I'm going to show you what it is. And it's really delicious. And it's one of those herbs people typically buy for things like hollandaise or right. bernays. Okay. And then they use it once and then it sits in the cupboard for six months. For sure. Which you shouldn't do. Spices need to be turned over, right? So if you have spices that have been in there or herbs then for a long time. Then why do they make the bottle so big? I know. But my, my tip is go and buy something at a bulk store. You know, if you only need a teaspoon oh. or a tablespoon, go to the bulk store and then you'll use it up and it'll be fresh. And it'll taste better. Okay. Now, okay. I use. I typically have seen it. I mean, I knew it looked like dried and chopped up. I didn't know right. what it looked like as a whole herb. So what this does is it a taste term. like? So, you know what? A lot of people describe tarragon as having a anise or a licorice flavor, but I don't want okay. you to think about that because it's not as pungent oh, as that. But the characteristics are quite sweet. So it has a sweet and sort of savory uh, characteristic, and it makes it uh, really delicious on things like a compound butter. Okay. That okay. sounds complicated. Okay. So compound butter, mm. super easy. You can actually do this with any spice or herb that you have in your cupboard. We're going going to start with a couple sticks of butter and we're just going to get you to start mixing that up. Okay. And what happens is when you pair a spice or an herb with butter, it helps to carry the flavor. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, tarragon is a fine herb, which means it loses its flavor quite quickly. So you don't want to cook it too much. You don't want to put it in things like stews or soups where they cook for a very long time. Okay. So putting it in a butter like this, so we're putting quite a bit in here. Looks pretty. Um, what happens is you're going to use it fresh on something hot. So then when that butter melts, Ooh, all that yeah. tarragon flavor and aroma really come through. Nice. Okay, I so see you have it there with some steak. Exactly. So what you do with that is you're going to mix it up. Now listen, if you don't want to be overly fancy, you could put this in a little dish, cover it with saran wrap and put it in the fridge. Okay. Or if you want to be Ooh, fancy. you've made little butter pats. Yeah, so you make Cute. these, what you do is you take this and put it on a piece of plastic wrap and then you can roll it up and you get this little log-like shape. You pop it in the freezer and it will stay really good for a long time or oh. in the fridge. So here, they, when you slice it, it looks like this. And then you can use it Pretty. on all the delicious things that we were talking about earlier. A steak is the perfect match oh, for tarragon. Yeah. Baked potato. Baked potato. A little bit of bread that's not garlic bread, but you want to put a little bit more flavor into it. So this can sit in the fridge or freezer for a long time. Can I rudely reach you across? You definitely can reach across because who doesn't want a little bit of steak in the morning? Right, before 9 a.m. But you know, we've been here for a really long time, so this is great. So let me, can you taste that tarragon as it comes mm -hmm. through? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really important nice. that you use it fairly um, fresh and not cook it a lot so it doesn't lose its flavor. So delicious. Yeah. Okay. This salad is gorgeous. So this is a lobster and orzo salad. You could use a tarragon vinaigrette for almost anything, even leafy greens. It would be delicious. But I thought we'd do something with a little bit of charred corn because it's mm -hmm. in season right now. So typical vinaigrette, we have some neutral oil. I always like to use neutral oil here because sometimes an olive oil will have too much flavor. When you... So would that be like a canola oil exactly. or something? Okay. Canola oil. So we ha I'm going to get you to whisk this together, sure. okay? So canola oil, lemon juice. Okay. And a little bit of Dijon. So Dijon okay. always helps to emulsify a sauce and it also ha helps to add that zip. Yeah. So tarragon is a classic French herb, so it goes really well uh, with mustard and, and, um, and lemon juice. Tarragon, yeah, nice. again, is our main herb today. A dash of salt and some fresh ground pepper. Always fresh ground pepper. All right, so you whisk that up and you get this beautiful, beautiful dressing. That was fast. Really quick and easy. You can make a double batch of that and set it in the fridge and then you have a uh, dressing Once for Once I started making my own dressings, I never went back to store-bought because why? It's so much better. And just put the whole thing on fresh? Yep. Yum. Just put it on. So we've got cherry tomatoes. We've got orzo, which is like a little tiny pasta, lobster. And why do you like the tarragon with like the fish, like with the lobster. So it's because it's a it's a fine herb, so it's not as hearty as say like a thyme or a rosemary, which has much more robust flavor. Uh, because fish has more of a oh, yes, good. more of a um, lighter flavor. It's, oh, it's that's a good pairing. Really fresh. Yeah, that that's really so nice good. and delicious. Mm, I'm gonna come back to this one. So classic pairing with tarragon is chicken. Okay. Okay. So tarragon chicken. So I decided to make a um, pot pie. So not only I did I make the filling with you know carrots and chicken and Ooh, cream so and good all this those time yummy of things. Year, it's cold now. Exactly. And you're going to put the tarragon, the dried tarragon, at the very end of cooking. So it has a chance to bloom and open up and add flavor, but it doesn't have a chance to dissipate. Okay. okay? And to add an extra layer of tarragon, I put it on the pastry. So you can just buy pastry already made at your grocery store. There's no need to get crazy. Okay. Make your own. Go make it from scratch. All right, so we're just smells going to... so good, Andrea. 
I have a question about using dried versus fresh. Okay, so... We've used dried for all of these recipes today. Yeah, so dried is something easy because people can keep it for a long period of time. You do have to be again. careful in terms of how you use them. So fresh tarragon, if you just wrap it in a little bit of a wet That's paper so towel... That's so good. Is it good? So good. Um, it'll last for a long time, but tarragon in its dry form, like I said, it shouldn't be cooked for very long. You don't want to lose the flavor. Use it in uh, fresh things like salad dressings, Bernays dressings, or um, a compound butter, and you're, and you're set. Andrea, the spice is right. I really love this one. It's really good. And you know what? Now that I have that bottle sitting in my cupboard way in the back, you know what to do with it. I know what to do with it before six months. Yes, which is definitely when we should get rid of it. Six months. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we will be right back. This is really good. I love this. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.